my name is Clayton Johnston, and um, this is my vlog about Invisible Man. So Invisible Man, right here, is a book written by Ralph Waldo Ellison, and it focuses highly on an individual's journey in the 1950s. Ralph Waldo Ellison was a black writer and wrote of a black man who faced many eye-opening experiences, furthering him towards greater and greater personal growth as the story went on. In a lot of ways, the book is a coming-of-age story, one where the narrator, an unnamed character, relentlessly seeks his purpose and identity. We see different phases of this character, and, um, and we see him transform from a young college student who attends a black university in the South and is wrongly expelled despite his well-intended actions into um, a successful leader of a social organization. Um, but let, first, let's talk about his first major crisis, um, which nullifies all the hard work that he put into um, getting accepted into the college. Um, and what he's actually told by the headmaster who is personally expelling him, uh, these, these white folks, quote, these white folks have newspapers, magazines, radio spokesmen to get their ideas across. If they want to tell the world a lie, they can tell it so well it becomes the truth. And if I tell them that you're lying, they'll tell the world even if you prove you're telling the truth. Because it's the kind of lie they want to hear. And that's on page 143. And this is coming from a man that uh, the narrator really looks up to even. Um, so this is the first brutal lesson that he receives, and it came at an enormous cost. Just... Um, just for acceptance into the school, he faced severe humiliation um, by participating in a battle of men labeled Battle Royale. Um, in this, a large collection of black men violently tore each other apart in front of an all-white audience. And after his expulsion, the narrator immediately uh, migrates north, where he believes he will receive a job due to his old headmaster's uh, letters of recommendation for him. But while he interviews, and he's on his last interview, he comes to recognize that even uh, this man that he looked up to, even though he expelled him, um, had deceived him and written illegitimate letters of recommendation that actually basically um, talked down about him and uh, do, do anything but help him receive um, one of those jobs he's hoping to get. But in no time, he's in the middle. He's actually a leader, kind of, um, of an organization called the Brotherhood, um, which he finds great uh, occupational success with, and he feels secure in. He enjoys uh, his natural talent of speech making at work, and he becomes increasingly comfortable with where he is in the world. Nonetheless, uh, at, towards the end of the book, he realizes he's been betrayed by the Brotherhood because they're... Um, they're really working in their own best interest, and they decide to neglect the entire black community in Harlem and basically let them destroy themselves. Which leads to the final stage of the book, where the narrator has acquired a greater understanding of himself and the world he lives in uh, more than any other point thus far. And the narrator actually ends up in a hole underground where he remains living um, for quite some time and has a lot of time to reflect on his past. He comes to realize that his biggest mistake in life was following the paths of others instead of creating a path for himself. And his conclusion is that it is far more important to find oneself by living out their, his own unique experiences and developing original thoughts than it is to live as a, uh, as a pawn who's uh, misled by or who's controlled by misled people in this world. Um, and the narrator states, quote, hence again, I have stayed in my hole because up above there's an increasing passion to make men conform to a pattern, which he is basically saying now he totally disagrees with because all these things that society tells him to conform to are illegitimate, they're flawed, which he comes to recognize. Um, and okay, so next uh, we'll talk about there's a tremendous number of themes throughout the book that make it an empowering experience for both the reader and the narrator. For example, we see firsthand how racism is an obstacle for the narrator and how it prevents him from establishing his own personal identity. Along the way, we actually see numerous obstacles get in his way, uh, mostly being racial. Uh, but sometimes, but oftentimes, the deeper problems that they manifest are not. For example, 
He cannot seem to shake this baggage, literally and metaphorically, as he keeps on having to carry around this briefcase, um, which is symbolic of his past, his unfortunate past. Um, uh, and I don't know about you, but I feel like everyone has some sort of baggage that they carry around with them, whether it be trauma, bad habits, or kind of an enduring anger for something. But this is one of the reasons I really like Invisible Man, is this part um, of the book is, is symbolic to something that's very relatable to, I feel like, everyone. Um, and just makes it relevant to you, no matter what time period you're even living in. Um, and everything that the narrator strives to leave, uh, I, as I said, was con uh, contained within his briefcase, um, but it keeps on coming back to him. So there is also an extraordinary, extraordinary emphasis on ideology um, uh, and the construct of society, which inherently blinds people from seeing the real truth. Um, you can see it fall apart, uh, or for instance, in the Brotherhood. You can see it fall apart when members of the bro Brotherhood um, clearly prioritize themselves over the black community in Harlem. And the narrator speaks for a mentor one time, for instance, um, a fellow mentor, or sorry, a fellow member of the Brotherhood. And he soon realizes that this mentor who's talking about this necessary sacrifice that needs to be made is actually just all coming at the expense of the black community. So first modeling uh, his life after an establishment of education that was broken um, and next the Brotherhood, another failed establishment, the narrator comes to understand that organizations like these are not meant to be idolized and instead are a path, um, and instead we should be pr uh, prioritizing a path towards self-growth uh, self and individual um, journey to kind of finding ourselves. Um, so uh, lastly, I think, or I'm going to talk about one last theme, um, which I think really makes uh, Invisible Man a great novel that it is. Um, now, all boils down to one word, relatability. So, um, so often did I find myself reading a particular line and thinking, I felt that way before. Um, and this is one of the things I really like is the narrator has a voice that's extraordinarily relatable. And although it's never in the same context, the narr narrator speaks of these broad themes and these realizations that really apply to life even 70 years later, like how he feels um, when he's getting expelled even though he did nothing wrong. At this point for him, it feels like the whole world is crumbling down even though he did everything like he was supposed to. It seems to me that this is an undeniable human experience that can be felt by basically everyone. Another reason why the Invisible Man is so powerful. Additionally, its historical and racial context is relevant as ever. The book seems, um, it's so crazy for me, uh, to me, for instance, that this massive looting that takes place um, that's, dis that's described is basically identical to the one that happened in Seattle recently. Um, or for me, Bellevue, that's closer to home for me. Um, which was, you know, uh, came about because of these racial ten this racial tension, the racial injustice that had happened. Um, and although it's never directly specified in the book, um, we the reader gets the presumption that it has to do with Clifton's shooting or something racially charged. Um, and lastly, the coming of age style that the Invisible Man follows. Um, uh, is highly relatable to the individual journeys that we take as humans, trying to discover what our purpose is, what we stand for, and meanwhile, uh, attempting to have ourselves be seen. The exact same things that the, uh, that the narrator struggles with, um, it seems that uh, we, we do. And while the story is so different from the story of ours, people living in uh, 2020 right now, um, the, even though the context is different, the process of self-discovery really isn't. And um, everyone has the same type of eye-opening experiences in their lives, whether or not, uh, or where, where something that you initially thought was true uh, ended up being entirely false. And these devastating moments are what connects us to the narrator and why I think this book is so astounding. Thank you for listening. <laughs>